about my water every time. I always forget something. Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to a new live chat. I feel so weird having lights in the background and not Perry, but it is what it is. I'm going to go get my water. I'm going to sneak away for a half second and get my water. I'll be right back. Okay. Never mind. I don't know where my water is. <laughs> Shoot. I must still be in the kitchen. Darn it. Tara says hi. Hello. Hello. Natalie. Hello, Natalie. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, Janelle. Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth, you said you like the lights. Thank you. Tanya. Oh my gosh. Hi. Okay, now things are moving really fast. Katie. Nicole. Paula. Hello, everyone. Hello, Whitney. Okay. How's everyone doing? I feel kind of like, ah, I just finished filming a get ready with me. It was like 2 48 when I, or when I turned my camera off, I was like, Oh my gosh, I have to hurry, hurry, hurry. So yeah, the little, little change up in the background with the lights, I'm trying to see if I like them. I don't know. A couple of videos will be going up with them in the background. I'll just see what people think and then maybe try to do something like actually like set up the lights like probably bring Mitch in here and have him help me out a little bit because I just kind of like threw them up and they're literally just like taped to the wall and I was like I, I don't know and then I figured I'd probably just let you guys decide and if you decide you like it but I am just thought I switch it up a little bit and uh, we actually have these in the house. I can't even remember. I got them for something. I don't even know what it is, but I got them and then I never really knew what to do with them. And I tried to actually put them up in the old house and they didn't really look great. And so I don't know, we just kind of have them sitting around. So, so yeah. And, and it's just like one long string. Cause I was like, Oh, it'd be nice if I could have them like, like draping down, like falling down or whatever. But I, that's, that's not going, that's not going to work out. So I got to figure out how, yeah, someone says they need to be arranged and designed. You have to figure out how, because it's literally just one string. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> in tomorrow's, uh, will I buy it? Like at one point, if I'm like in a certain way, it almost like looks uh, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Butterfly wings. <laughs> so I have to figure out, I don't know if, if they're going to stick around. Because again, it's kind of hard with, only having one string of lights but but we'll see but we'll see if we can make it work you know me I'm always just like a professional youtuber with the most professional setting and backdrop and all of that always super professional so so we'll just see uh, but I hope everyone's having a great Tuesday oh, a lot of you are saying it looks like constellations, looks like stars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blind Beauty said, have you missed most of the live chat? No, I've only been here for three minutes. And the first minute was like me looking for my water bottle. Uh, Netta says, we come here for your professionalism. I really appreciate that. Um, really enjoy that. Thank you so much. I, I also really enjoy being a professional. So <laughs> when he says, always love the professionalism, that is totally me. 100%. Uh, I did film this look. So this is going to be Friday's chatty get ready with me. So you can check that video out. That'll be coming, which I'm excited for. And yeah, and I just I like I just finished showing right before I came on. I, be, I feel like I've been doing a lot of live chats in the morning. So I was trying to switch it to just something in the afternoon, but it's so hard because I film in the afternoons. So I actually still have to continue filming a video after this. So, uh, uh, uh. uh, am I wearing the Tati palette? I am. I am. I do have it on my eyes. Mrs. Unnecessary says I'm only here for the super special effects background and productions. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here for that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I really had anything like super pressing to talk about. So I'll probably just be here and you know once again professional but I'll just like be here and hanging out uh one thing I put on like my little card my like thumbnail when I kind of talk about um what we're gonna do in these <laughs> um 
I was going to talk about like meeting YouTubers. I saw someone said, I will you be able to talk about LA? I love how you popped in on Hannah Louise Poston's video. Yeah, I've so the past like a couple months, I've been able to meet quite a few other YouTubers and it's been, it's been so much fun. I've definitely been doing a lot of traveling and it's been a lot of traveling for like makeup and beauty events and all of that. So um, truly just one of the best parts for me have been meeting other people that do the same thing that I do and being able to have conversations in real life. And that's really been such a fun thing. It's something I hope that I can continue to do more also in, uh, in the new year as well, which is crazy because we're almost there. That's so wild. And I don't know, I just, I know I've talked about this before in one of my vlogs, but I feel like especially in the beauty community, there's always just like, oh, there's so much, you know, drama and there's so much negativity and like, I don't know, just all this other stuff. And I just feel like I'm seeing and being a part of such good things. And I just wanted to like keep reminding people of that, that there's so many good people. I had like the best time in LA the past, this last week. It was so stressful getting there. I don't even know how to begin to explain what happened with my flight and why it got delayed because oh my gosh it was just an insane day and like at one point I was texting with one of my friends that I was going to meet out there and, and I was like I think I just need to go home like I think I just need to say I just need to scrap it I was at the airport for eight hours on Thursday I was supposed to leave at seven o'clock in the morning I didn't leave until after three like it was just it was so bad and everyone was being so nice like no like we really want you to make it like hold on like maybe you can do it like and all of that and I'm so glad I did because even though I was really busy when I was there and there was a lot going on it just also had a very chill like relaxed <laughs> vibe to it and I just had so much fun and I know so someone mentioned that um, us popping up in Hannah Louise Poston's video if you haven't checked out Hannah's channel I definitely recommend that you do once I'm done with the live chat, that's when I go back in and put like links up to anything that I talked about and whatnot, but I'll, I'll definitely link her channel. And it was so much fun. So Hannah's been doing this advent calendar series. So she had uh, one of her friends take um, different products in her makeup collection and wrap them up. And then it's like her own advent calendar, but with her own makeup. And each day Hannah um, opens a new one and then she'll create a look with what's in there. So we were over there one night. It was me, Hannah, Lauren May Beauty, who also has a great channel. Our friend Simbri, she's on Instagram and she's just like a she's just like a powerhouse in herself. She's so awesome. And Hannah was like, I hope you guys don't mind, but I have to film this quick check-in for the video. And we're like, What? We should probably be in it. <laughs> and so we were just all in the background of this video. Oh, it was so great. And I was watching Hannah's video. I didn't realize that because she's been filming it like in different weeks I didn't know at what point we would make our appearance in there and so I saw that she posted a video I was watching it and it wasn't until I mean kind of towards the end of the video that all of a sudden the mess or the the screen changes and there's the three of us in the background I was like oh yeah that was so much fun and Hannah's editing and it was really funny which was awesome uh but it was such a great time I got a few messages from people asking if I was going to be filming like a collab video with Hannah or Lauren and what sounds weird is that I didn't even think of that <laughs> like I know that probably sounds so silly to think but the reason why I was going is there was a couple different holiday parties Simbri was hosting one and Hannah and Lauren had helped her put it together and that was on Thursday night and then I had actually agreed to go to the Magic Links holiday party like back in September when they first finalized a date and they invited me and I said I would go Simbri invited me to the party on Thursday and I was like I was actually going to be there on Friday like I like I can totally come on on Thursday too to go to that party and I don't, it's, it's interesting because we ended up talking about it because I actually did message both Lauren and uh, Hannah about collabing because I started to get messages from people like, are you collabing? Like, will you collab? And I was like, why didn't I even think of that? 
and literally I, t I think I texted them both on Tuesday and I was leaving on Thursday and we, like we just knew that we wouldn't be able to fit it in with our schedules and Hannah was doing so much work and Lauren's doing vlogmas and trying to you know film and edit all of those and truly it's a good thing that we didn't but because my flight was so delayed we wouldn't have been able to do the collabs anyways I got to LA I landed at 5 got to my hotel at 6 and was calling for a lift at 6 45 to get to the party that started at 7 and I was 45 minutes away so I mean we wouldn't like there wouldn't even have been time if we had planned to do a collaboration but what's funny is that when we were talking about it I was like you know for some reason it wasn't even my in my mind to do a collaboration I was just excited to come and hang out and like just hang out with friends and relax and chat and get to know each other better and uh, things like that because when we are filming and we're collabing technically that is us working <laughs> and I don't know I just didn't even think I didn't even think about it so when so when people started asking me I was like oh oh oh, oh yeah like I, I guess we could do that and then we really said that it wouldn't work out for timing and I was like you know what? I, I'm okay with it because it kind of takes away some of the like stress and pressure and filming with someone else because I have done in-person collabs it can take such a long time and I don't know, all of that, but uh, I'm hoping sometime if I do get back to LA that it would be fun to do a collaboration with them for sure. But this was just kind of a relax chatting and then going to parties that night. So that was kind of fun. Uh, Natalie said, did you do anything touristy other than the Grove? That was pretty much all I did. I was really disappointed because I got such an early flight on Thursday and it was the direct flight, which I was super excited about. Um, Cause I was like, oh, you know, I can, I don't have to worry about a connection and being delayed and missing a flight and all of that. And I'll be there at, I was supposed to land at eight o'clock in the morning. It's like, I'll have time to do a little bit of exploring even before I can check into my hotel and then check in, maybe rest and, you know, go exploring again before we go to the party. And then obviously that was ruined because again, I, I mean, I was late to the, the party on Thursday. I didn't feel the most like confident and I was, I mean, I was exhausted. <laughs> I it just, it was just like such a bad day. I kept like talking to other people that I was meeting for the first time. And I'm, I kept saying like, please don't judge me too hard. Like it's just been a really hectic, crazy day. I haven't had a moment to just like sit and thing for myself like you know I've just been stuck in this airport all day it was super stressful didn't think I was gonna make it arguing with Delta like all these crazy things and everyone was so nice to me like everyone was so great uh but on Friday that's when I went to uh the Grove and that was a lot of fun to see all the different stores and they had so many beautiful like holiday things up like the big tree was up and all of that and that was really cool I had seen on the weather that it was going to rain because I was trying to decide between going to the Grove and then going to the Santa Monica Pier but I wasn't sure from what I knew about the pier it seemed very like outdoors and I saw rain was in the forecast and I was like oh 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 I don't know like do I go there do I not so I ended up going to the pier and I thought Santa Monica or I ended up going to the Grove I thought Santa Monica might be a good time, like, if I was with someone, too. Like, if I ever do make Tele again, I'd, maybe Mitch can come with me. Like, that might be a fun place for us to go together versus the Grove might be, like, just a good individual activity since it's just kind of, like, shopping and stuff. So, and then that was about it. And then I had to get back to my hotel room and then get ready. And then I went to Hannah's before the Magic Links party. And then we all went there together. And then I was at the hotel or I was at the airport at 530 on Saturday morning. So, it ended up being a lot faster of a trip than I was hoping for because of all of the delays that happened, but still a good time. I did see someone ask if I would plan to, or if I would ever move to LA. No, I don't think so. Um, we just moved, actually, we just moved in April to uh, my husband's hometown for his job, and we're also close to his family, so I don't, I don't really imagine us moving to LA, so... No, um, my questions keep, like, my comments keep popping up and then disappearing quite a bit, so it's kind of hard. Um, Joey said, were you able to enjoy the party despite being so tired? I, yes, yes, I, I, I was. It was kind of a struggle. Um, I just felt so 
tired because again, I thought I was going to get in early. I thought I was going to be able to like take a nap and just rest that day and to be able to have time to get ready. I felt really rushed getting ready. And it's so hard when you feel like when you feel like you're maybe not looking the best and your makeup's not the best and all of that and you're going to a place with other beauty bloggers, it's kind of like, oh no, like it's kind of, you know? But again, everyone was super nice and I felt like I was able to enjoy it. I saw someone say, <laughs> give yourself an extra day. I did want to, but things get tricky because I'm paying for all of these trips for myself. So it's getting very expensive. And with all of my issues happening with YouTube, I've just mentioned like my income's being cut in half. I don't really know if I'll be able to travel this much in 2020 um, because again, I'm, I am paying for this myself. Uh, but what's hard is that I don't live near an airport. So when I fly, if I'm flying a really early flight, I have to pay for a hotel room to stay in an airport hotel. So that's what I had to do this time. So I was actually gone for three nights. Um, and I thought about doing a flight at night and then having the three nights in LA, but hotels are so much more expensive in LA. So I chose to have the extra night be in Iowa and then take the early flight and get there early and be able to relax and all of that. And that just didn't work out, but it's hard when you add in flights and then you add in all of your hotel stays because I mean... Hotels can get really expensive, especially in LA and especially near the airport or anything like that. It gets very, very pricey. So that's why a lot of my trips are just like boom, boom, in and out really fast because unfortunately I just don't have the the luxury of just being like, let's hang out for five days. I just, unfortunately, I don't have that and I'm just trying to do the best I can um, and to be able to have these opportunities to travel and meet people and you know make connections and memories and all of that but still doing it smartly <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> so that's that's what i'm trying to do uh i saw someone say did delta make it right uh no i'm 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 through traveling on delta i'm through with it <laughs> and um i've had so many travel issues lately and I know people have been saying like why do you keep using Delta and the reason I keep booking Delta <laughs> is because Delta keeps having issues and they will not refund you your money no matter what even if they cancel a flight even if you bought travel insurance <laughs> they still do not refund you your money they will give you a voucher to put towards your next trip so that's why I keep booking Delta because dating back to last year, Generation Beauty, if anyone remembers my travel struggles and getting stuck in Philly and having to take a $200 train ride that wasn't reimbursed by Delta because they canceled the flight, all they keep doing is giving us vouchers, vouchers, vouchers. We had issues when we traveled over Thanksgiving to see my family, voucher. That's how I bought these trips. So again, because I can't, because I just don't have like money flying, like per Perry is not a money tree. Uh, so because I don't have that, it's like, okay, I could pay full price and do a different airline or I could take this voucher and cross my fingers that this is the time Delta is going to have it together and they just do not have it together. They just, they just don't. So even though they offered me uh, a $50 voucher, which was so great, um, and they offered me like 5,000 miles, <laughs> cool. Um, I just can't, I just can't handle traveling with them because they don't, even when they screw up and it's their fault, they're like, don't know what to do for you. I had to be the one to find the flight to get me to LA because we even, they delayed our flight. Then we got on the plane. Then we got off the plane and then we just sat around and I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking I need to be there. Like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And finally, they kept saying like, oh, it's, it, it would be quicker to just stay on this flight. You should just stay on this flight. I'm sure like it'll be fixed shortly. Everything will be fine. And they just kept pushing back the boarding time an hour. And then that hour would come. They'd push it back another hour. They'd be like, no, we're, pr we're pretty sure that we're going to, you know, fly out. And finally, I was the one that find, found an American Airlines flight and went up to the counter and was like, put me on this flight. Like, I have to get to LA. Like, that's all it's become. Like, I have to get to LA. And then, so they moved the flight and I went around and told other passengers on there, like, I'm, I got moved to this American flight. You should go move too. 
And then they still didn't even do it right. I still almost didn't have a seat on that flight because they didn't actually transfer the tickets. So the, the American Airlines guy had to leave his station, go over to Delta and try to figure it out. I was like, what is happening? And then they make it sound like it's my problem. So it just was, it just was such a mess. And again, I, I spent an extra night in Iowa at that hotel, obviously paid for the hotel myself to be there because I had a six o'clock flight. They immediately, they, the night before they delayed it till nine o'clock. So I really didn't have to have that hotel. It just was a huge, it was a huge mess and that they just keep offering. But I mean, I'm sure that's why they offer vouchers. Like, I mean, it was crazy. The craziest part though, like the craziest part is that they kept pushing back the flight, right? Until, so the plane, because we did get on the plane at one point, the plane was only like maybe halfway full. Like I was sitting next to a guy and the flight attendant came up and she was like, are you guys traveling together? And we said, no, she's like, you can move because the plane literally was half empty. So she's like, you, you can move if you want. So I'd, I had ended up moving, then we had to get off the plane. So at one point we are all rebooked on this American flight. Luckily it had seats for like the 10 of us or whatever it was. And I'm sitting next to a guy from the plane and we're talking to each other. And I was like, at one point I go, do you think that's, do you think a reason why they kept just pushing back the flight instead of canceling it, even after we all rebooked is because they don't want to refund us because if they canceled the flight, they'd have to refund customers. And he was like, maybe. And so I reached out to Delta and I was like, I need to be reimbursed for that flight because it was canceled. You know, everyone got rebooked onto a new flight. Delta wrote back to me and said that flight was not canceled. The flight left at three o'clock and got into LAX at like 4.03 or something. And I was like, that's a bold faced lie because we were at the airport at three o'clock. That plane did not leave. We did not see that plane leave at three o'clock. There was no boarding process for it. And there was no passengers because we all got rebooked because that flight was supposed to leave at 6.48 in the morning. Like that makes me so, so, that makes me so mad. And that's again, that's a, that's a reason that I just can't, I can't, I can't, can't, can't deal with them anymore. Isn't that crazy? I just thought that was so crazy. Oh, I was hot. I was hot when they said that. And there's just so many airlines that I've flown that I, I, I can remember we were flying on, I think it was Frontier, when I went to Vegas last year with some girlfriends and it got delayed on the way back. And so like our, our flight was delayed and we would have missed our connecting flight out of Denver. So that flight, we had to get rebooked on another one. And so there was all those things. But by the time we landed back in Des Moines, we all had an email from Frontier with a with a credit voucher. Like we never even had to ask. We never had to say anything. We never had to do anything. Whereas with Delta, you have to call, you have to complain, you have to be on Twitter, you have to email, you have to call again. Like it's so it's like, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy to me. They don't actually want to help you. So I don't know. This makes me so happy that, no, nope, come back, that living in the EU, we have policies in place that automatically give us compensation for delayed flights over a certain amount of time. American air travel is <laughs> archaic. That is insane to me. That is crazy. Dang. Dang. I wish we had that here because, wow, would that make things easier? Yeah, it's crazy. So I flew Southwest for the American Influencer Awards, and I remember just being so shocked that I had no issues. Like we, we boarded on time. That was crazy. We got there early. I mean, the way back, once again, we boarded on time. Like we never board on time. I, I have TSA pre-check. So I'm like that person that rolls up as boarding is happening because it just is so easy to make it through and whatnot. And with Delta, I remember thinking like, oh no, I, it was on, it was the morning there. Cause I had to be there at like 5 30 in the morning. And I was like, uh, I'll just take my time. And I was like, no big deal because they never board on time. Like I can be a little bit late. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Delta is really big in this area. So I'm just going to try my best to avoid them and stick with Southwest as much as I can. But I don't know. The thing is, is that I do understand that things are going to happen. Delays are going to happen. Cancellations are going to happen. But when you have to fight with an airline to have things go right, that's what I think is really crazy. Like that's that's what I think is messed up. That's what makes me, I can't trust someone because of that, but especially to lie 
to just a bold faced lie to say that your flight left when we were all still sitting in the airport. We were sitting at the gate across from that flight. That flight did not leave. Like, I feel like that should be illegal, <laughs> right? Because the reason that they're saying that is because they don't want to refund customers. Weird, 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 weird. So that was, that was just, that was just like a little bit of what happened on, on Thursday. <laughs> so, and it's so hard because like I emailed them because I was trying to get refunded for my hotel on Thursday since I didn't end up needing it and whatever because of the flights. Um, and it's just frustrating to get an email back of someone saying, I know exactly what, what's going on and I know, I know how to like fix the issue and they don't and it's just all a mess. That's, oh, makeup Molly's here. Oh, Molly, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I watched your video, was it yesterday? <laughs> your birth video and I was crying and then I was trying to tell my husband about it and then I started to cry again and I want to cry just thinking about it. Oh, I can't even imagine. Ah. Oh. My friend Molly has had her baby. My friend Ashley had her baby. If you guys didn't see, Ashley Clady had her baby too. She has the most adorable photo on Instagram. Oh my gosh. I'm just, oh. Oh, I know. Okay, like literally, like I'm upset. <laughs> Thinking about Molly's story. Oh, it just made me so sad. Yes, Ashley had her baby. She has a picture on um, Instagram. It's on her YouTube community tab too. I won't spoil anything. I mean, we knew that she was having a girl, but, um, but I'm going to be really, I haven't texted Ashley yet. I try to, I try to wait like a little bit when people give birth before I like start texting and everything, but, um, I need to text Ashley and figure out what happened there too. Cause both, both guys just did not have good experiences. So I got to see what's, what the heck is going on with Ashley too. My goodness. I'm just glad everyone is okay from what I from what I understand, everyone's okay. So, man, oh man. Ugh. Oh my gosh, I'm due in 2020 with identical twins. Oh, congratulations, that's so exciting. Ah, are these your first babies? Very cool. Yeah, Molly says, I hope Ashley's recovering well, yes. Molly's little boy is so adorable. I love watching all the uh, Instagram stories with them. It's just so cute. Oh, so cool. So exciting. It's so fun to see what everyone like names their babies too. That's so, it's like weirdly exciting for me. I just feel like it's so, and uh, yeah, Emily Noel's little boy too. He is so, they had the sweetest photo on, on Instagram the other night too. I feel like all I keep texting or like writing into people sometimes is like, oh, and like hearts and like, hard eyes, like that's all I can say these days, but everyone just has the cutest babies. One of my best friends is pregnant too. She was talking to me, or as I messaged her today because I knew she was looking for daycares. Jeez, to get into daycare, you really gotta like be on it. She said they don't even need daycare till like August, but the one that she chose is already almost filled up. Like, whoa, like that's just like, you really gotta be on the ball again at daycare, let me tell you, my goodness. Uh, but yeah, I was talking about like baby names. I think it is so hard to name characters. I can't even imagine naming a human. I feel like Aries's name came really easy to us though, our dog. Like I, even before we had a dog, I knew I wanted to have a dog and name her Aries. I don't know. Um, oh, so, you so many YouTube babies. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know how to begin to to name a human, but I feel like everyone's coming up with such cute names too. I love it. And weirdly enough, like I've already named my next dog. Like I, that's like, it's just weird, man. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> oh, so funny. So funny. Okay. I feel like I saw, oh, am I ready for Christmas? Uh, well, we put up a tree. So Ooh, this says cover girl mentioned me in a post. That's exciting. I'll have to check that out after the live chat. Thanks, cover girl. It's fun. Uh, we have our tree up. My husband put Christmas lights on our house. This is the first time that we've done Christmas lights. So 
that's pretty exciting. I feel like there's this like, weird pressure of living in a smaller town and especially where, especially he knows so many people here and like, he's more involved in the community because of his job and everything. Like, I feel like he feels a certain pressure to do certain things. So he's like, I don't want to be like the Grinch, like the only one on the street that doesn't have lights. I'm like, okay, you put those lights up. Like, he did it when I was gone. But it was nice because I didn't get home till later on Saturday from LA. My flight didn't get in till four. And then again, it was about a two hour drive for me. So it was kind of nice to come home and I saw all the lights on the house. I was like, oh, that's cool. Because he didn't tell me he wanted me to just be surprised when I came up. So uh, yeah, I thought that was funny. And we have a tree for the first time. We we never had a tree because our condo that we lived in was so small. There was literally no place to put a tree. And then our house that we lived in, again, just kind of spacing issues was very small. And Aries was a very small puppy. We didn't know how she would react with a tree. But we got it here because we had room in the basement to put it up. And Aries doesn't care about it at all. Like, doesn't pay attention to it. Doesn't we didn't know if she'd want to like chew on it or like mess with the ornaments that were hanging. Literally ignores the tree. No cares in the world for it. So, so that's kind of funny. Uh, that was funny. Amy's here. Hello, Amy. Natalie said, there's a show I used to watch called Christmas Light Fight or something and loved how all out people go. Yeah, I have a, um, I have some cousins that would, I mean, their entire house, I don't even want to know what their electricity bill was but their entire house would be covered. Like they would be on the news, like the newspaper would put them in and all of that. I don't know how they did it or like that it would have to take them days to put up everything on there. That's just, that's just crazy. But I did order some, some holiday gifts for people. We have a little bit more shopping to do and all of that, but it will be nice this year that we don't, we aren't traveling for the holidays. We traveled to see my family over Thanksgiving who are down in Alabama and I'm in Iowa. And um, usually for Christmas, we would travel back to spend it with Mitch's family. Uh, but because we live here now, we don't have to do any traveling. We don't have to be not like away from Aries because we would bring her, but a lot of times she'd have to go like in her kennel most of the day. And then this way, like we're at home and, and all of that. So so that'll be nice, especially with how much I've been gone. It's kind of nice to not have to then be gone for so many more days for all the Christmas festivities and, and all of that. So, so yeah, I'm excited. But yeah, we do have some plans with Mitch's family. He usually has a few different get-togethers and all that. So, so that'll be a good time. Are you guys ready for the holidays? <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, it's a lot, man. Um, yeah, it is, it is hard to travel with big dogs. That, for, that is a for sure. Uh, is Aries getting any new sweaters for Christmas? I do, I do want to get her. I do want to get her a new sweater. It's fun. If you guys follow me on Instagram, which you should, uh, I post a lot of Aries. It's mostly Aries' is Instagram. It's not really me. Uh, but in the stories, I post a lot of her, but I have her pick her, her sweater that she wants to wear that day. She has three sweaters, a gray, a red, and a pink, and I lay them all out, and then I have her go, and then she goes and picks one, and then that's what she wears. That's so much fun. It's the little things. It's the little things that make me happy. Molly, you said thankfully you did your shopping early. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. Got that out of the way. Concentrate on the more important things. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I was excited because my niece actually asked for a plum, plum paper planner, um, the planner that I have. So I ordered that for her or she ordered it and then I paid for it as her Christmas gift when we were down over Thanksgiving. So uh, Natalie says we haven't had an Aries flop for a while. Yes, she usually she just does the flop where she just like faints really dramatically when she's super hot. So we probably won't see any flops for a few months now. Uh, that's usually her go-to, like after we get done with a walk or like playing outside for a long time and she's super hot and the sun's been on her, she just like falls dramatically to the floor and it's the most ridiculous, overly dramatic thing of, of life really. And it's so funny, but yeah, we probably won't be super warm for a while. It was like one degrees this morning. It was very disappointing. I was, I was very chilly. Katie said, Aries is warm toned. She can pull off so many looks that she can. She really can. 
Yeah, I gotta get her, I gotta get her uh, a new sweater. Sometimes it's just hard. I typically order her sweaters off Amazon. And sometimes, I mean, just from company to company, it's, I mean, it's, it's you know, kind of similar to buying clothes and whatnot, but the, the sizing can be so different. So I really have to look at the measurements of like the back and, um, you know, just all of that. Because in some sweaters, she's a small and some she's a medium and some she's a large. Like, so you really just have to look at all of the measurements of everything. So if you're buying clothes for your dogs, just uh, m measure them and try to go from there. So it's a little bit, a little bit confusing. Um, I saw someone ask if I'm going to stop YouTube. Uh, oh, um, Chewy has clothing. How come I didn't know that? That's where we get her dog food. I'm going to have to look into that. I didn't know Chewy had clothes. I guess, I mean, we just have like the auto ship for her food. And I really don't look at anything else, but I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I've been having so many problems with YouTube. What really has is bumming me out is how many other people are saying they are too and the different issues people are having. Not only with losing subscribers, but demonetization is still really big for so many people. And even I had one friend telling me about how she's been trying for over a year to get her her play button for hitting 100,000 subscribers and she can't get any help and doesn't have her play button, which, you know, I mean, I I don't know. I think that's really exciting. You work really hard to to, to get something like that and to see a, other people getting it with no, no issues. I feel like that has to be such a bummer. So I don't know. Um, it's always interesting how, I don't know what I want to say or like how much I want to say on the topic, but for me, I started to notice an issue with my YouTube channel in February. February of last year is when I started to notice like something odd was going on. And I finally just started talking about it within the past couple of months here. And that's when so many other people have been reaching out to me and saying it. But it's almost like, it's almost like people, I'm, and I don't know this, I'm making this up myself. So I, I, I'm not like quoting anyone. But it's almost like people are kind of afraid to say anything because, I mean, I guess when you already think that you're being blacklisted by YouTube, if you talk about it, then you're, it's only going to get worse. But I'm just someone who, like, I'm a very, I'm a very, like, play by the rules type of person. And I'm very, if I don't think something is right, that's what makes me really upset. And I don't think that something is right. <laughs> and that's what makes me mad. And that's why I want to talk about it. And so starting to talk about it, having all these people write in and say that the issues that they're going through are the same thing. People have been having issues for like two years, you know, one year and all these other stuff. And I'm like, I had no idea because I don't, cause I don't know, maybe people are too afraid to talk about it because they don't want to get like even more, more strikes on YouTube or whatever it may be, but such a bummer. Um, yeah, my thing is that just when I upload a video, within the first like few minutes of of uploading a video, I very swiftly lose subscribers, um, and like, and I mean like sometimes it's a hundred. The other day it was a hundred and ten. That's a hundred and ten subscribers within fifteen minutes of uploading my video. <laughs> and you know it's like I don't I don't mind if, and I said this last week, so I don't want to be like too repetitive, but. I, I don't mind if I'm not going to like grow a ton on YouTube. That's fine because I have a really supportive community and that's amazing. And that makes me so happy. But those people are being unsubscribed <laughs> and messaging me like, I'm so sorry. I keep getting unsubscribed. Oh no. Someone got unsubscribed from Karen Harris. Oh, I love her. That's, that sucks. I get unsubscribed too. I cannot stay subscribed to Desi Perkins and Emily Noel. Those are the two biggest channels that I always have to search out their videos. And every time I do, I'm not subscribed to them every time. And it's, it drives me insane. But I actually had someone send in a video the other day of her going to my channel, subscribing, going out, coming back to my channel, not subscribed, subscribing, going out, going back to my channel, not subscribed five times. A lot of people are saying that girl Shay, a lot of people are saying they, they are getting unsubscribed from that girl Shay. That makes me really sad. Uh, so that's crazy. So like, obviously there's an issue, right? So I have sent in screenshots from people saying, I keep getting unsubscribed from your channel and I'm not doing it. And then I sent in the video and it's all in one. There's no time cuts. There's no anything. It's just all in one. You see that she is not staying subscribed to my channel. I sent those into YouTube. Oh no, Kelly said you get unsubscribed from Emily as well. 
No, someone got unsubscribed from Mel Thompson. <sighs> See, this is just, it's just so crazy to me. So I sent all that in. And what's weird, the first response I got from YouTube was them saying they don't see an issue with my channel that I've gained 125,000 subscribers over three months. I don't even have that many subscribers. <laughs> I'm like, no, I think you're wrong. Like I wrote back and was like, I think you have the wrong channel. I only have 85,000 subscribers. That doesn't make any sense. And they wrote back and they were like, nope, we're looking at the right channel. Everything looks fine. And I'm like, no, something is wrong. And I sent in the screenshots of people saying, you know, I get unsubscribed from your channel and YouTube wrote back and they're like, that's out of our control. <laughs> what? So then I sent in the video of someone showing that they literally cannot stay subscribed to my channel. And what they say, I read it really early this morning. What did they say? It basically was something similar to that's not in our control. They said, they said, if this is happening to multiple channels, it is a glitch on YouTube's end and we would be notified of it, but we haven't heard this from anybody else. And so there's nothing we can do. So that's why I'm like, I wish more people were either saying it or writing into YouTube and maybe they are and we just don't know, but more people alerting YouTube or tweeting them or something because clearly something there is an issue. And I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if multiple people were writing in and that's just their like go-to was like, no one else is, <laughs> so everything's fine. So I don't know. Um, so again, it's just such a bummer because like, so today I hadn't posted a video and I was up like 40 subscribers. I was like, look at me, look at me, look at me. But live chats tend to be the worst. YouTube does not like when I do a live chat, I pretty much very swiftly lose subscribers. So I'm really, I'm really excited to see how many I've lost today. But again, it's, I wouldn't be mad if it was people that are like, you know what, I don't really vibe with her channel anymore, or I just don't really watch her a ton or whatever it may be. Like I'm going to unsubscribe. Fine. But because I get messages every single day from people telling us that they're not doing it, that's what's, that's what's so frustrating to me. Like that's, that's what's making me angry. And that's what's making me honestly starting to consider something like a Patreon. Uh, a lot of you have suggested it for me, but I'm trying to find a way to have another place where I have a community basically. And I don't know if that's the right answer. I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but I was trying to go through, um, I don't know. I was trying to go through it and, and put everything together and, and all of that. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do because again, uh, like I said, it's another thing that's happening with my channel is that notifications aren't going out on time to everybody. And I've gotten screenshots from people on like a Monday and it's their notifications of like whose video popped up. And I can see, you know, people that I follow and like, this is the video that they posted today. And then there's my video, but it's a video that I posted two days ago. So my views are starting to really suffer even on videos that normally views would do better. Um, a lot of times, yeah, a lot, a lot of people are saying they didn't get a notification for this live. I get that all the time too. Um, so it's like my videos aren't going out there. A lot of people are saying they aren't in my, I'm not in their subscription feeds. So because of that, my income is suffering too. And it's just hard to be able to do something so full time. Like I do YouTube with all of the videos that I film and the editing that I do and all of that. I, I just can't, I can't work a full-time job on a part-time paycheck. Unfortunately, I just, I, I don't have that. I'm just not able to do that. So I don't, I don't know. And What's a bummer, like I said, is that this has been happening to me for um, since February. So it's been almost a whole year. And I've talked to a couple people who said they've also been experiencing it for a year. I've talked to a couple people who said it's going on two years. So I just, I, I don't know if once you get in this like weird black hole with YouTube, if there's ever actually a way to come out. And what's interesting is that through so in the summer I did a collaboration with like a fairly larger YouTuber um, which was you know it was exciting for me and we posted our collab video 
and I got a bunch of new subscribers that day and I was like, wow, this is so cool and, and da da da. The next day I had lost all of those subscribers and then some. So it's like, I want to think that if I just work harder and I'm more consistent and maybe if I do clickbait thumbnails because that's, you know, that's what people click on. It is. People click on clickbait thumbnails, even though we all say that we're mad about it. We click on titles that are more interesting. We click on something that sounds like maybe it's drama or there's going to be tea spilled in that video. I'm like, maybe that's what I need to be doing in order to get the views because hopefully people will come and see it and they're like, hey, you know what? I, I like this girl. I'm going to subscribe to her. But I don't think it matters at this point. I really don't. I think that no matter what, I'm just going to get subscribers taken away from me and people that are choosing not to unsubscribe from me I think that's what that's what's gonna happen so again that's why I'm just I've never put all of my eggs into one basket when it comes to YouTube um you know obviously still write books and all of that which is great but it's also why I started a podcast just like looking for different avenues and and different places for revenue and all of that, but it's why I've been looking at a Patreon. I see a couple of you have recommended a couple places that I will definitely check out as well, but I've had some people, like I've seen, oh, I can't think of her name off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but she lost 600,000 subscribers. Like her, her YouTube channel was wiped out basically. So, which was crazy. And she had to completely restart her channel again. And she had, I'm pretty sure it was 600,000 subscribers. And I feel like every day I'm just ready to wake up and see that I don't have a YouTube channel anymore. That's what I'm expecting, which is a bummer. I've worked really hard at this. I've put myself into, yes, yeah, swoop. I put myself into a huge debt to try to start a YouTube channel and somehow I've gotten put on something that's happening here and it's going to get taken away from me. So it's really disheartening. It sucks. And it sucks when I hear that other creators are going through it too. But what do you do? I mean, no one's making me do YouTube. Like, right? That's the thing is that YouTube is our employer, if you will, and we get a paycheck, but not really. We don't have to be doing this as a choice. Um, YouTube doesn't offer guarantees, you know? So it's, so what can you do? But I do think that it is a bummer that a platform that is supposed to be all about the people and, and all of that, you can definitely see it dwindling quite a bit with even something like freedom of speech not really being here. The demonetization I know is a huge thing. I actually got in a pretty long conversation with someone at the party last Thursday, some of her stories were crazy that she was saying. I mean, she even has it so much worse than me. And I felt so terrible for her. And she's not even, she's not in the beauty community. She's in a whole different, a whole different section. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what she do. Um, Yeah, Vicky says you can make a huge YouTube tea reveal video. It's clickbait material, but it's also true. It'll bring awareness to this issue and views to your channel. I think a lot of people would watch that. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, but the thing for me is that what I really want and what I really strive for and what I really felt like I had with this community is I felt like we had a community. I screenshotted um, why this is going to make me emotional. I don't know. I screenshot us on the plane. I think I was coming home from LA. One of my subscribers had written a comment in saying um, that my videos really helped get her through school and um, she had just thrown her dissertation and, and all these great things. And it was my first time reading it. I was in my comments. And when I clicked on it, there was like 30 comments underneath, all from other subscribers saying, congratulations, good for you, good work, way to go. And I actually started to cry on the plane. Cause I thought what a nice thing like how nice that other people are being so supportive to someone that they don't know what a cool thing that I have in my comment section not people fighting not people bickering not people putting each other down but I have people supporting one another that's cool 
So that's what I want and that's what I've been trying to create with my YouTube channel. And that's why when my growth came to a halt, I was like, oh, whatever, like not a huge deal. I've always said that my, my goal with YouTube is not to be the number one beauty blogger. It's not to be the person with millions of, of subscribers. Like if it happens, cool, neat, like that's awesome. But that's not my goal. That's not what I'm striving to do. I know how to get views on YouTube. I do. I know what videos I should post to get views on YouTube. I know that. I don't want to. That's not what I'm super interested in. But when my community starts to get taken away from me, that's what makes me angry. Because I have worked really hard at staying true to myself, at preaching positivity, at building this amazing community. And when that gets taken away from me, that's what makes me angry. <sighs> Sorry, didn't mean to like preach for a second, but um, I saw someone say something. Miss Melissa said, you have, you have, thanks. You have changed and shaped so many of us, Sam, and I'm so thankful for this community. One of my favorite things about the August challenge was that all of us were coming together and supporting each other. Yes, I agree. That's why I was thinking of the the, the, the Patreon and finding a different place where we can have even just like a smaller community so I can do a challenge again and do videos that you guys really want to see but maybe don't do well on on YouTube and I don't know just different things like that that's what I'm trying to do and um, that's what I want so if you guys listened to last week's podcast episode so my podcast is called Start Inspired the links are in the description box, but it's on like Spotify and um, Google Play and iTunes and all of that. But I was talking about a time that I lost my business. I lost my publishing company because of a whole crazy story. I go through the whole thing in there. I know we're at 52 minutes. But I owned a publishing company a few years ago. I was really proud of it, worked really hard at it, put a lot of my mo own money into it, and I lost it overnight because of someone else's mistake. And it was terrible and it was horrible. And I'm still sad about it to this day. But because of that, and because I lost a business, because I had all this time open up, because I had, I don't know, mostly just more time, it's kind of crazy, but I was able to try to find a new opportunity. And what I found was YouTube. I was able to make more videos on YouTube, be more consistent on YouTube and all of that. So I'm trying to look at YouTube <clears throat> really should have found my water bottle. I'm trying to look at YouTube possibly coming to an end or having to slow down as a way to find a different outlet and a different opportunity. And I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of things that I want to do because again, and one thing too, going back to when someone asked me if I would ever move to LA, I've been asked that question even when I only had a YouTube channel for one year. That's really never been an interest of mine because I'm not only trying to be in the beauty space. And that's no offense to anyone who is because that's great. Whatever it is that people want to do and what makes us individual and unique, that's amazing. Do you, you got to go for it. But that's never been what I have thought my path is. And as I have grown on YouTube, like as a person and I have matured and I've gone through different things, I can see a little bit more clearly now what it is that I want my path to be. I can see what areas I really want to focus on. And I love beauty. I love talking about makeup. I love being able to do my makeup on camera and chat and hang out. But if I have to slow down over here because I can start to grow in another area that I'm just as passionate about, then maybe it's not a bad thing. Maybe it's happening for a reason. And, you know, maybe I can just focus more of my time elsewhere. It's why... I've been cutting back on videos, not only because every time I upload, I, I, I mean, I'm to the point where I'm losing 100 subscribers now per upload, which is crazy. So, so not only that, but because it frees up more of my time so I can work on different things. So I don't know. I have a lot of ideas for 2020. Maybe some of them will come to fruition. Maybe some not. But as of right now, I don't have plans to leave YouTube because honestly, I love my community. I don't really have a lot of appreciation for YouTube at this moment, to be honest with you. And if I didn't have so many of you guys and so many of you that look forward to my videos and still come by and still resubscribe to my channel 
every single day, <laughs> that means a lot to me. And I don't just want to be like, peace, like I, because that's not, you know, I feel like I have an actual friendship and I truly do have a support group with you guys. And that's what I appreciate. So I'm not just going to abandon that. Um, my podcasts are not monetized as of right now. Typically with podcasts, how you get paid is through sponsors. Um, I'm actually to the point that I can find sponsors. There's like a certain threshold of number of downloads that you typically need to get to in order to get sponsorships. And we have made it there. So, um, so yeah, I might with season two, I said, maybe I would look at some sponsorships, just kind of get everything together and figure it all out and the editing and all of that before I start bringing sponsors into it. But hopefully in the next coming months here, I can start to get some sponsors on the, um, podcast, which would definitely be super exciting. I'm going to take on some more sponsorships with YouTube, you know, of course, not ones that I don't believe in and, and all of that, but usually I try to really like space out sponsorships or only do a certain amount. <coughs> I'm going to lose my voice or only do a certain amount in like a certain amount of time. But I'm like, you know, if I want to keep doing this and oh, <coughs> sorry, totally gonna lose my voice. But if there's sponsorships that I actually do want to do, I'm not going to be so like, oh, I just did one last week. Because I do also really I if I want to keep doing this, which I do, Hold on, I have to find my water. <coughs> okay, I was trying to run on hardwoods with socks on. Okay. Sorry, I really needed some water. My voice is still kind of struggling from LA and just like talking so much and like yelling at parties and all of that. But um, yeah, so if you guys see a few more sponsorships, again, I'm really excited for everything that I have coming up because um, either the products that I've tried or just the companies I think are really cool. But, you know, of course, there's always like a fear of sponsorships getting backlash and all of that. But um but yeah, I just, you know, I want to try to keep going and everything. So yeah, but I know I've seen a couple of you say like, what can we do to help? I mean, honestly, I would say if you do notice, whether it be with my channel or someone else's channel, if you notice like getting unsubscribed, you know, maybe take some screenshots and send them in to, to YouTube. <clears throat> because maybe if we're more vocal about it being an issue, um, maybe they'll actually take notice. So, I mean, that's one way. And I mean, obviously just like watching the videos, I mean, stuff like that is, is, is really helpful. I've seen people, my phone's gonna die too, we're at 15%. Um, you know, I've seen people say like running playlists and things like that. Honestly, I mean, I don't even think you have to do that, just like regular views and, and, and just watching the videos and stuff. Like, I think that that's a great thing. So, I did, somehow I just got channel memberships unlocked on YouTube, so there's that, but I don't know. I think part of it also goes back to YouTube, just like in Super Chat, like if you don't, if you donate during a live chat and it goes to Super Chat, YouTube takes like a huge percentage of it, <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and like I saw someone say like, buy my books. Yeah, you know, like just like, just like the regular things. I don't think there's anything super crazy that people have to do besides, I, I think just the biggest thing is that if you're someone who sees an issue, then, you know, try to try to make it known to, to YouTube and all of that, because maybe that will actually help. But yeah, thank you guys for even asking that question. I really, like, I really do, do appreciate it. I think that's, that's really nice. Um, Yeah, I still need to watch um, Raw Beauty Christine's Smoky Glows video. It went up when I was in LA and I I haven't fully, I haven't even attempted, not attempted, what am I trying to say? I just have not been caught up on videos yet. I need to get caught up on everybody because I'm really curious about their topic and what they have to say. But yeah, um, I have a couple mindset makeup videos that I'm planning to do. 
and all of that. And I maybe we'll talk about this topic a little bit more in there and kind of expand on it. But I do see that we're at an hour, so probably should go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> um, but thank you everyone who came by and joined. I do appreciate it so much. Thank you for coming by the live chats. I think that it's, I think that it's great. So, um, <laughs> um, so thank you. Thank you guys so much. I will be back here next Tuesday as well to do a live chat. I typically know the time either the night before or the morning of, I'll give you guys the time, but thank you everyone, um, for coming by and for your support and all of that. I mean, honestly, I just, I appreciate it so much. I, I, I keep doing this because I love the, the connection that we have and no matter how hard YouTube tries to take it away, I'm going to keep trying to be here. So <laughs> I hope everyone has a wonderful night. Thank you so much for coming by and I'll see you guys tomorrow. New Willow Bite video. Bye.